certain activities become so much a part of our lives that we lose sight of how dangerous they can be. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of hope and healing on Rescue 911. We begin outside Rome, New York on March 6, 1993. A snowstorm had recently blanketed the area, leaving ideal conditions for 16-year-old Lisa Tomasi and her 10-year-old sister Courtney to go snowmobiling. Safe on that snowmobile. Okay, we're off. Me and my sister like to go snowmobiling a lot because it's really fun and you can go places without your parents. My mom told us to watch for cars when we crossed the road. We knew that things could happen on snowmobiles, but that's why we, we tried to be really careful. We wanted to go somewhere new, so we drove to the woods to see what it was like. We had to go across this road on the other side of the field. There was this little path, so we followed it, and it led us to a bridge. It was really narrow, and I'm like, I don't really want to go over it again, but we had to. I started getting scared, but I didn't tell Lisa that. I just tried to get the snowmobile off her, but it was too heavy, and I couldn't get her head above water. I felt really bad about leaving Lisa, but I knew that I needed to get help. When the snowmobile that 16-year-old Lisa Tomasi and her 10-year-old sister Courtney were riding skidded off a narrow bridge into an icy creek, Lisa was pinned under the freezing water by the snowmobile. That day, brothers David and Doug Shimoleski were snowmobiling on a trail they hadn't taken in more than 10 years. We uh, happened to notice a, the young girl looked soaking wet coming towards us. And she was hysterical, and I, at first, I just thought she was just upset that she had put her snowmobile in the water and that she was going to get in trouble with her parents. I couldn't believe that there was a body under there. It was, it was pretty scary. Hand her to me, Dave. Right, Doug, I need your help. Get down here, man. Yeah, her clothing was caught on the snowmobile, and uh, she was heavy from all the water weight. Come here, man. Got her? Yeah, I got her. Her mask was full of water, and I looked into her eyes, and there was nobody home. My hands were frozen, and I was fumbling with her helmet to try to get it off. Now. I knew she wasn't breathing, and I was really scared because we don't know how long she was underneath the water. I tried to get a pulse, and I couldn't feel anything, but I knew we had to get some air into her lungs. Breathe. Breathe. Come on, breathe. She always got me mad, but I really loved my sister, and I wanted her to stay with me and my mom. Come on, breathe. 
the air just rushed right out just like I was blowing up a balloon and letting it go. Come on. Come on. Breathe. I gave her a few more big breaths, and then she started breathing very shallowly on her own. Yep, she's breathing. She's breathing? She's breathing. All right, I'm going to go get help. Okay. Go clean her airway. She gets sick. Hurry up, man. All right. I was happy she started to breathe, but I was also concerned that she wasn't taking in enough air. It was very labored breathing. Come over here and sit down with your sister. I was yelling and screaming, saying, please, God, why does this have to happen? I was thinking what life would be without her. Come All of a sudden, she just started kicking and screaming. Courtney was saying things like, you know, I always say I hate her, but I really love her. I, you know, I want her to live, make her live, and I'm like I can't do anything other than what we're trying I felt so bad for her and because I had no idea you know if we could save her or not I took off my coat and I covered her up I, I had nothing else to offer Help's on the way Dave. I thought for sure there might be some brain damage because you know she just kept screaming and her eyes weren't really working well either and I thought, oh boy, you know, did I do the right thing? You know, did we do the right thing? And I said, yeah, we had to because at least we gave her a chance to live because life is real precious. The Lake Delta Volunteer Fire Units were the first to arrive, led by Deputy Chief Paul Taylor. When I opened up the door, I could hear her screaming from down in the woods. It was a very high-pitched, shrill screaming. It, it makes you work faster, run harder. Um, didn't have any idea what was wrong with her at that point. But I knew it couldn't have been too good if she was screaming like that. You're going to be okay. Help's on the way. Okay? Lisa? Okay. It was difficult to do any secondary survey on her whatsoever, or to stabilize her neck for that matter, because of the flailing around. It was a sign of a head injury. It was a bad sign. Okay, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. <laughs> Grab her. Got it? You got it? Now get the board. Okay, ready? Ready? The board, three. Good. I got into the Stokes basket and straddled her head and shoulders with my legs and held down her head, shoulders, and neck, and then we towed her out with the snowmobile. Whenever you deal with um, somebody in your own communities, you work hard because you don't want to suffer the loss. Amcare Ambulance Paramedic Joe Taylor helped load 16-year-old Lisa Tomasi into an advanced life support unit. She was rushed to Roman Murphy Memorial Hospital, where she was admitted under the care of emergency physician Tim Mathis. Our first concerns were that she had suffered a severe head injury. Okay, okay. Come on, honey, relax. Okay, okay. With her thrashing around like that, we'd never be able to get the specialized x-ray test to determine if she needed a, a neurosurgeon immediately. So we had to paralyze her. Karen Tomasi joined her daughters at the hospital. I just felt felt helpless and it was my fault. I shouldn't have let him gone out. You know, I should have been with him. You know, all that stuff was going through, you know, as a parent, you know, that I, I should have done this, should have done that. You know, she shouldn't be here right now. It was like I was in a nightmare and then I was going to wake up and it was all going to be over with. But it, but it wasn't. After she came back from CAT scan, her lungs began to swell with fluid and that made her progressively more difficult to breathe for. He said it was very, very bad and there was a very good possibility that she wouldn't make it. And I told him that he was wrong. I said, she's going to be, be all right. I said, I know my daughter. She's a fighter. I said, she's going to be all right. Come on in, Mom. Neither one of my kids ever been in the hospital before. It's your lady and I felt so helpless. I wanted to take the place of her so bad. Does she know that I'm talking to her? She knows she, she hear me? She knows it's Yeah? Oh, she feels so cold. 
Lisa was transferred to the Health Science Center at Syracuse. And by the next morning, when her mother came to see her, she had regained consciousness. Hi, honey. It's Mom. Hi. I love you. Mom? Even though she had this respirator, she was trying to talk to me. Lisa, do you want to try to write something to your mom and get you a piece of paper? We'll help you. She'll go get you a piece of paper and a pen. We'll help you. Here, honey. Now hang on to it for you. I love you, Mom. You know me. Oh, honey, I love you, too. It made me feel really, really good. It said, I'm crying. I said, I thought that you you weren't going to all be with me. And and she said, I'm here. What am I, the ship? Yeah. I don't forget where I am. Okay, eight. One, two, three, four. Snowmobiling will always be one of my hobbies. But going over that bridge, definitely, that was a big mistake. I was just <laughs> She's not any different than what she was before. <laughs> yes! Hey! <laughs> There's a lot of things that I really have to be thankful for. The AM care, the fire department, the doctors. But the three most important people in my book are my daughter, Courtney, Dave, and Doug Shimoleski. If it wasn't for them, my daughter would be dead right now. That's the bottom line. On behalf of uh, the United County Sheriff's Department, I'd like David Shimoleski to come forward. Doug and Dave Shimoleski were honored by the city of Rome for what they did that day to save Lisa's life. I didn't really know what she looked like, you know, all made up and uh, with dry hair and all. And, uh, and when my brother pointed her out, I uh, almost lost it. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a pretty happy time because uh, I guess we had a lot to do with her being here. My sister didn't want to leave my sight in the hospital, and I thought that was sweet. She's my best friend. I haven't told her that she is. I'll always be there for her no matter what. When she was in the hospital, she said, I love you to me. And so now I know that she really does love me.